in that consultation. So we had a team of young commissioners who were part of a very robust process, and three of our young inspectors um, you'll see um, their findings reference on page 7 of the paragraph 226 to 232. And, and uh, we, we wouldn't have them with us this evening, and uh, certainly uh, I know that you invited them to attend. Uh, those of them that participated in their non the exam and, and felt that uh, directly they had to prioritise their votes. So, uh, I, I thought we would have our commissioner here, and I think we might start a little bit early. Um, so. Thank you. Any cabinet contributions on this item? Yes, I, I will recall one more exam. That was a long time ago. Okay. Um, <coughs> Right to four contract award, risk and resilience uh, contract 2020 to 2023. We've minded about exempt item 11 that's been noted, and we're on recommendations A and B. They agree. Thank you. We move on to item 5, and that is Merton Adult Learning Strategic Objectives. Uh, Councillor Ellie Stringer. Um, thanks to the adult learning team, including our newly honoured by the Queen, Anthony Hopkins, for all their work on the strategy. This is a service we should all be proud of. I went to visit last week one of the lessons for adults with learning disabilities, which is clear how much the learners are getting out of the course and how much they value the high quality teaching they were getting from the Richmond and Hillcroft Adult Community College teachers who run that service for us. Tonight, we're presenting a paper that outlines the strategy that we will use to guide the commissioning and management of adult education services in Merton. We're in a really strong position. Having moved to a fully commissioned model a few years ago, we've managed to bring our budget under control while improving the relevance of our service for our community of learners, particularly those from more deprived areas. And we've done all of this while achieving an increase in quality. So as you can see from the appended offset inspection, we're now a good provider. This is a huge achievement. We were one of the first to be inspected under the new Ofsted framework. And Ofsted doesn't care that we're no longer the direct provider. They just want to be sure that the teaching and learning, the outcomes and the curriculum are of the highest quality for our learners. This is in the end. We want to deliver further improvements and to achieve increases in the KPIs outlined in our strategy. And as the funding shifts from central government to the Greater London Assembly, um, Greater London Authority, uh, we have to remain clever and flexible to make sure that any changes that they bring in will work best for our learners. So I'd like to thank the officers for their work and also Councillor Nick Raper, who preceded me as cabinet member on this to our spring, for their work on making the model a success. Thank you very much. Any cabinet contributions? Councillor Welt. Yeah, I'd just obviously like to add, I mean, this is an excellent report and I think it fully justifies the council's decision um, to commission the service um, four years ago, a service which had cost the money considerable, considerable amounts and was a required improvement service at the time, I think has been um, transformed. Um, just on one point, obviously one of the reasons as well, um, can you explain more in terms of employment, uh, employability yeah. and skills about the contribution of Merton adults um, to that? Yeah, and that's been uh, or something that we've wanted to change once, um, in our strategy is making sure that our curriculum does focus on employment and employability outcomes where appropriate and that's also something that, that offsets are interested in. So we offer a wide range of courses. We still offer some that are kind of non-accredited courses that are for community learning for people who just want to get back into it but we also offer a large range of accredited courses that help people um, develop the qualifications that they need to get into jobs and the skills that they need in order for that to be a success and the right to raise access and that a key aim of what we're doing here. Any further cabinet contributions? Uh, I myself would like to add my thanks to everyone, including Anthony Hopkins, all the staff, all the volunteers, colleges, uh, and the cabinet member for their work in continuing to provide this excellent service that's achieved a good uh, from Ofsted. Um, we're now on item five, Merton Adult Learning Strategic Objectives. We're on recommendations one and two, they agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll move on to item 6, DSG Recovery Plan, Councillor Ellie Street. <coughs> uh, me again. Uh, I, I won't go into this in lots of detail because I think that the paper that Rachel has written kind of speaks for itself, but as a headline, we are facing great pressures on our ability to support the growing number of children and young people who are eligible for additional support due to their education and health needs. 
we are completely committed to delivering positive outcomes for those who are um, have special educational needs and disabilities. As you can see described in our ambitious STEM strategy, which will be coming to Cabinet shortly. The government needs to recognise that the increase in numbers, partly due to the extension of the age eligibility that they introduced in the, uh, in the Act in 2014, partly due to other factors, has not come with additional funding. So in Merton, the number of pupils with EHCPs is now at nearly 2,000, a huge increase, or I think just over 2,000, a huge increase since even a few years ago. We need to have this message home to government, that's one of the recommendations here. They have offered us a bit more funding this year, which is lovely, but it really doesn't plug the gap at all. Um, we do, however, recognise that there's more that we could do in Merton to improve how we use our funds as effectively as possible to support schools and pupils. Given that the overspend on the high needs block of our data community schools run is over 1%, we were required to submit a formal plan to the DfE showing our plans for delivering these improvements. The five-year version of this is what has been um, appended to this paper, and you'll see that even that, despite our plans, does not bring it within um, out of deficit. A major source of our overspending is our reliance on independent special schools. So as a result, two of the key aims that we talk about are increasing the supply of state-funded special school places and working with mainstream schools to improve their ability to support pupils with education and health and care plans in mainstream schools which many of them will really do brilliantly, we just want to help them to do more of that. Work another way on both those actions, and we'll be monitoring that work and changes to the numbers and the budgets in the coming months. Thank you very much. I'll turn to our Director of Children's Schools and Families, Rachel. Thank you. Any cabinet contributions on this item? Councillor Edith McCall. Thank you. I think I'm delighted to see that um, the council has doubled the specialist provision for Hatfield School which is, um, I'm a school governor in Hatfield, I'm delighted with that. So that's, moving on is quite good for the school itself. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Caroline uh, cooper -Marbe. Yeah, I'm just um, happy that with the financial difficulties that um, we're still trying the best that we can to provide uh, for our young people. I just wanted to ask about the DSG reserve, because I know there were times when we could sometimes get money from there to do what we needed to do, and I'm just wondering, where we are with that, is there any possibility anymore? Or have <coughs> you Happy to answer that. So, um, we no longer have um, a DSG reserve because that's been used in previous years to uh, offset um, the uh, overspend that we, we were incurring. So, the deficit now um, is after the application of the reserve. Councillor Mark Harris. No, I mean, I, I just wanted to um, make a note Look after our children 
and fund us so that we can provide the best that our children, um, uh, we have best for our children um, without impacting on the other core services that the council provides and that our residents need. So um, we, we just use this opportunity to grandstand um, a little and to call on the government to pay attention to this very important issue to have a big impact on our children and our residents if they don't take action. I quite agree with uh, Councillor Stringer and, uh, and Alison as uh, leader of this council. I attend the <coughs> monthly leaders committee, that's leaders of all 32 uh, 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 London boroughs, including the city of London as the 33rd authority. And this is an issue that plays big amongst all local authorities, irrespective of party allegiance. But it is uh, playing a part here because we desperately want to look after all children and will continue to lobby both individually as a borough but also uh, with other London boroughs uh, at this government. Any other cabinet contributions? And we're on item six, that's the SG recovery plan. We have recommendations one and two, they agree. Thank you. We now move on to item seven, the annual review and other matters relating to the Veolia street cleaning contract and waste contract. And we're also mindful of uh, exempt item 12. Uh, Councillor Mark Allison and Councillor Toby Byers, or Councillor Toby Byers first. Thank you, Chair. So um, this paper relates to the South London Waste Partnership contract with Veolia, which contains provision for an annual review. And that's a mechanism that enables the parties to um, look at the contract <coughs> and look at the, the circumstances um, that exist now compared to when the contract was entered into and to ascertain whether it needs to be amended in any way and um, to, to reflect those changes. So that process has taken place uh, in recent months and this paper sets out um, a number of changes that are proposed to reflect changes that have occurred since it was entered into. Um, <coughs> page uh, 56 um, sets out those proposed changes. So there's a proposed change to the core contract price to reflect um, an increase in the number of households in the borough since the contract was signed, um, and an increase in the number of assisted collections we now have since the contract was signed. There are further adjustments proposed for uh, public rights of way and green space cleansing, um, for recycling, for which we've seen a very significant increase since the um, service change, particularly in 2018, but that does mean that more resources needed, um, and we've also seen a downturn in the recycling market since the contract was signed, um, and for the provision of additional containers. Separately, we've also looked at the volume of fly tips in the borough, and we know that they've increased significantly in recent years, both in Merton and um, across the country as a whole, and it's proposed to put in some additional resource to deal with those fly tips, um, something that Veolia has been putting in itself um, for the past year or so. Uh, we feel that it's right that we put in additional resource to, to clear those. Um, this is a process that all four boroughs uh, of the South London Waste Partnership have gone through, and similar papers will be going through their um, decision-making bodies over the next few weeks. And these are all costs, ultimately, that any provider um, running this service, internal or ex external, would face. The report also contains at 2.23 um, the deductions for years one and two of the contract. Um, the year one deductions need a slight health warning because they were applied in a, a set way as the systems were not fully integrated at that point, but the year two figure was applied as per the um, SPIs. And it's now proposed that the deductions will be reported on an annual basis with the year three deductions available at the end of the financial year. It's important to note that this, um, the annual review process is a contractual mechanism which doesn't in any way reflect the council's view of the level of service we are currently receiving. I think it's fair to say we do still remain um, very disappointed at the level in some areas particularly, notably street cleansing in the east of the borough, and we will continue to um, both work with Veolia and hold them to account for their poor performance 
and seek to improve those standards. Thank you. Sure, did you want to add uh, I just wanted to echo the, the work that we're doing with the OLA to raise the standards to us. We know they're, they haven't met those standards and we work persistently over the course of the year to make sure that they improve those standards to the contract specification. Thank you. Um, thank you for the report and this is a, uh, a four borough annual review that is a standard <coughs> uh, commercial practice uh, to review these, these contracts and I remind everyone of uh, page 57, 2.23 of uh, the deductions of £410,000 in year one but as the cabinet member has said <coughs> that may be reviewed but definitely the year two deductions are based on and agreed on the agreed uh, formula at £73,000 and there will be year three deductions uh, 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 that we announced at the end of the financial year. So we are deducting and will continue to deduct when the service does not meet the needs and aspirations and expectations of our residents. Any other cabinet contributions? Yeah. Councillor Edith McCall. I think, I think I, I'm, I'm pleased to, to notice in the report that there's going to be a word by word, you know, um, sort of like monitoring to ensure that, you know, an eye is kept on each word so that we know what is happening, if the if speeds are kept um, clean, so we can see what effect this is going to have. Yeah. So I'm, I'm delighted to see that. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Caroline Cooper, my <coughs> bear. <coughs> I'm pleased with the, um, the fact that we've had this review and we are responding accordingly because um, I know we have many queries and I think we need to do something about it. So we review and we see that um, uh, there are more flight taking and stuff like that and we put in more resources and then we hope to get better results. So I'm happy that we are responding positively. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're on item seven. It's the annual review. End up in that is relating to the Vionia Street Cleaning Contract, Mworth's contract, with green recommendations A to C, mindful of the exempt item uh, at 12, so we don't uh, urge the public to leave our meeting. It's something we don't like to do. Are recommendations A to C agreed? Agreed. Thank you. And then we want to item 8, it's a regular reporting item. Financial reporting 2019-20 for the month of November 2019. Councillor Mark Hayes. Thank you, Leader. Um, um, this is uh, month eight um, of the uh, financial reports um, throughout the um, throughout the year, um, and um, I just use this opportunity as I do every time um, to, um, to thank um, the, uh, the staff of the officers of the council. Um, for the work that they do to help um, compile this. Um, it is very useful um, as we go through the, uh, the course of the year to know where the, uh, the stresses and strains um, are and um, also where savings um, might uh, potentially um, be made in the future. Um, so it's, um, it's good practice um, what we do here and it has helped a great deal um, with, um, with planning for the, um, for the budget. Um, as, as we're going to come um, um, to that, we we're obviously aware that there's been particular um, stresses and strains in the um, area of um, children's social services and um, education services, and that's um, led, as you'll see in the, um, in the budget papers, to a suggestion that there be some, um, some growth um, there. Um, and, um, and it highlights the, uh, the concerns that we have about um, the industry and um, the here. Um, having said all of that, um, thanks to the uh, of the sound financial management of the, uh, the staff here. The, um, we're currently predicting a very, very small underspend um, this year of around about 0.1% um, of, uh, of the gross budget. Um, obviously, there will be further fluctuations in the, uh, in the last four months um, of the year, um, but um, to be so close is uh, very good work by everybody involved, and I think we should pass that on. Uh, thanks to everybody who works for the uh, Fourth Council and the work that they do on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. And to our Director of Corporate Services, Caroline Bonner. 
Thank you, Athena. I just want to add there's quite a few capital adjustments because monthly is normally the time when we ask people to review their program <coughs> and hang on the, the, the budget, so that's why there's a significant number there, but nothing to be too concerned about. Um, and we've obviously built in the outcome of the annual review into these numbers, and the dedicated schools grant unfortunately has increased further from last month to 10.6 million effectively, and um, leading to an overall deficit by the year end of 13.5. So you will notice those figures are slightly different to the deficit that we've set off to DFE just due to timings. So we are pretty significantly over going to the early year in DSG. So it just shows continued pressures on the agencies coming through. Thank you very much. And the cabinet and the contributions. And thank you for including the uh, capital program adjustments within the actual recommendations themselves under recommendation B that it concentrates down one. So we're right to make financial monitoring month of November 2019. Our recommendations A and B agree. Thank you. As we've dealt with item 10, 11, and 12, uh, uh, mindful of that, we're on our last item, but a very important item, item 9, the business plan 2020. 2024, Councillor Mark Hans. Um, thank you, Peter, and, and thank you again um, for everybody for their, um, their hard work um, on, um, on this, um, officers, staff, and, and, and councillor and colleagues as well. Um, when we sort of like uh, set out on um, this process, there were very large um, gaps um, in, the, um, in the budget um, for this year, and there was a great deal of uncertainty um, about what, the, what was likely to happen um, to, the, um, to the budgets. Um, we were looking at um, anything up to about £20 million per uh, year um, gap um, in, the, um, in the funding that we were going to receive. So it was very difficult, um, it has been a very difficult process. Also, um, we have been um, interrupted by um, democracy. Um, a, a general election um, was called at a time when we might have expected um, uh, to, um, uh, to find out um, what our funding um, was going to be and to, um, to make the preparations. And therefore, the stage that we're at now is a little bit later um, than it would be um, usually. Um, but um, we're back on target now, back on track to, um, to have a balanced budget um, by the, um, the beginning of March. And that's um, as a result of a great deal of hard work by a lot of people. Um, and also um, the, um, the understanding um, of uh, members of our scrutiny panels who have agreed to delay their, um, their meetings um, to um, sort of at the uh, next stage. Um, so in the um, in the first round of the um, of the budget when we were on the business plan, um, we um, we recommended around um, 3.6 million pounds um, of um, of savings, um, but we also um, considered um, some areas um, that, um, that should get um, some growth um, in funding um, due to um, either um, um, repeatedly um, being under strain like um, children's um, services. Um, or um, things like emergency pay and um, maybe to the additional um, funding. Um, since the, uh, the, um, the first round which went through, um, through scrutiny, um, we've had um, a settlement um, from the government and we've been able to, um, to work um, further. And um, based on us um, agreeing to um, council tax um, increases in line with what the government expectation is, so that would be a 1.99% um, increase on the council tax, um, plus an additional 2% for the um, adult social care preset that the government is expecting councils to, um, to take. Um, that would, um, that would, that's been taken into um, to account. Um, we're also um, uh, pleased to, um, to say that um, our, our pension fund um, for, um, for council staff um, has, um, has overperformed or has performed um, very well and um, consequently um, the amount of additional money that we need to put in to support that has, um, has reduced and that's due to the uh, valuation of, this, um, of the, uh, the fund from early 2019. Um, there's also um, a number of other things including um, new social care grants and the great deal of work that um, the Treasury team and the Capital team have, um, have done to and to bring the, um, uh, the, uh, the budget as close to um, balance as possible. 
Um, we can um, achieve a, a balanced budget um, for um, this coming year, um, but it will require um, us to um, <coughs> to recommend savings. So I thought I was going to make it through a, a whole lot without my, uh, my reflection coming through. Um, <coughs> um, Um, obviously, um, it's, uh, it's not an allergy, but it's like me being allergic to telling you what the bad news is, which is the level of um, savings um, that, um, that we're um, needing to, um, to make. Um, so for the second round um, of, the, um, of the budget, we're recommending savings of um, £3.4 million. Pounds. Um, if we can um, agree that, and if the um, scrutiny um, can accept that, and the whole package um, of, the, um, of the budget, um, overall, then that would mean that we would be balanced um, for um, future years and have delivered um, growth for um, services that most need it. Um, so um, hopefully um, we will see what um, we'll see what um, scrutiny says. But uh, on that basis, I recommend um, this um, this package <coughs> um, here. It's a balanced package, it's a business-like package, and um, we hope that it will be um, accepted and therefore residents can continue to receive excellent services um, from the, uh, the council and we can continue to make sure that that is a great place for, um, for families. Thank you very much for that. A moment to carry right <coughs> Thank you. Um, I suppose building on what Councillor Allison has said, so whilst the settlement did come through quite late, um, it was one year only, but it was a good settlement, better than what we had been anticipating. However, because it's only one year, that's caused us some further difficulties as to how we plan for those future years. So work will be commencing in a few months as to how we then put our case forward as for the additional resources <coughs> that the size that the cape that local government needs and then how it's shared amongst us all. So there is a lot of information here which we're going on to the scrutiny panel starting next Wednesday with all the revenue savings, the revenue growth, the associated draft quality assessments for people to review and come back to see if there are any changes that are needed. What we've also done is updated some of the other information, so the fact that our pension fund now has gone into an overall surplus, so we've been able to release some of that money back to reduce the amount of savings otherwise required, and we've up increased our council tax base, so again there's further monies that are coming back into the authority to enable us to do the work in those areas. We've attached draft service plans, so again, I know scrutiny do like to go through those, so service plan for each <coughs> area, the forms, indicators, budgets, projects, for you to have a look at and to consider what that means, <coughs> as well as the draft um, expenditure and income for each um, division as well, so again, for you to see the context in which some of those savings and growth proposals are being put forward. I keep forgetting about growth because it's been a few years with no growth, it's been quite an easy thing to say. Um, we've also discussed the fact that the London Business Rates Pool, the basis on which we had been in that has, has changed, but certainly we're just finding out that no FARA has said that they're not going to continue with the pool on a different basis going forward, so just waiting for that confirmation to come through. I suppose whilst on page 139 it does look like we have a balanced budget for 2021 and a minor gap of 4.2 million for 21-22 compared to where we were previously. There are still gaps in the settlement that came through. We are waiting for the grant information and we also still need to work through the impact of the national living wage in the last contracts where we have allowed for that terms of additions. That 6.2% increase was quite a surprise for us, so we just now need to work through what that means. So it is likely that there will be further changes to these numbers when they come back to Cabinet in February, but minor changes, I'm hoping, at this stage. And obviously, as we go through scrutiny of the Commission in particular, if there's any update on those numbers, then I'll let you know. I just wanted to flag that the expansion of our special schools, as referred to in the dedicated schools grant recovery plan is allowed for in appendix nine there as well. So it's how we <coughs> get everything together and the growth from the annual review has been built into this version of the, the budget as well. Thank you very much and I'm carrying the contributions. <coughs> I'd like to add my thanks to uh, to everyone. Uh, uh, 
celebrating the knowledge but still tough times ahead as the director has said uh, we have just had just a one year settlement so we don't know what's beyond that um, but I wanted to thank all officers the cabinet member and the cabinet and everyone scrutiny as well uh, and I hope that they're mindful of uh, where we're at uh, we're heading towards a balanced budget we will listen we will um, see what uh, what they say it's over to them now uh, but these are very very tight times as we move forward. Any more cabinet contributions? I think we're there with uh, item nine, it's our final item. We're about to close the cabinet. I <coughs> urge you, cabinet, to look at recommendations one to seven on item nine, business plan 2020-24. Are they agreed? agreed? Thank you. That concludes the cabinet meeting. Thank you. <laughs>